Guys, I feel like this is it. Something feels different about this. I don't know how many snow geese that is, or how many snow geese that is, but it's a pile. Oh, straight up. Kill him. Yes, sir. Oh. Woo. Nice. That is by all definitions a juvie. Yeah, yeah, that's like the textbook look of one. Yep. Yeah, you see how iced over his chest yeah, is? It's a cold morning. It's yeah. a cold morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice shot on that. And now we have something to cook, actually. Yes. This is gonna be good. And yes. honestly, the juvies will probably be better because I imagine, I mean, just like all younger animals, yes. more tender, like less know. migration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, less migrations under the sun here. So when you think about the adults. You know, they fly 3,000 miles down and 3,000 miles back up every year. Yeah. And on top of that, they fly around 50, 60 miles a day. Yeah. They get to be a deep, rich, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got some big pec muscles on. Uh-huh, definitely. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm excited that we have something to work with. This will be fun. Yeah, nice shot. I mean, is it, does it ever get any easier than that, like hunting snow geese? Snow geese are an all or nothing ordeal. You're either struggling like we were, or you have those days where you're shooting 100, 150. I've even heard of guys shooting 750 in a day, <laughs> which is hard to imagine with how our hunt was. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, what, we got 18, give or take, yep. a week, right? Yep. Nice. Yeah. Hey, but I mean, thankfully we only need one for what we're doing today. Yep. So I wanna show you this recipe because I know that for you, snow geese are like kind of, I mean, you use them as like a primary meat source, right? Yep. Throughout the year because you get so many of them yep. throughout the season. And so I was thinking of recipes that they could use this. You know, Sean needs a go-to recipe for when you invite somebody back over to your house. A date night. Yeah, like, like hear me out, it's called steak dining. We're gonna serve it with something called rusty potato, which is, the easiest way to think of it is it's a, a potato pancake or a hash brown pancake. Okay. So will you peel these potatoes for me? Um, and once you get them peeled, I'll show you what we're gonna do next. You and I saw this in the field, and now it's even more exaggerated. This, like how the breastbone just protrudes, how they're like, yeah. what did you say, they're atrophy? They're, right? Yeah, they almost get a, an atrophy, a muscular atrophy from the migration. It's crazy And they, their skin gets real tough and they lose all their fat because they are migrating so hard to get north for breeding. I'm just shocked to see that it kind of has this concave nature, but more importantly, the meat isn't really tough. Like, no. it's amazing to me how something that does that much work isn't also tough. So we're gonna use the breast, but the reason for that is that the traditional recipe for Steak Diane, well, this is actually debatable. The traditional recipe that I know is Steak Diane is using beef tenderloin, and the other says you do it with sirloin. So okay. I, don't, I don't know what is actually the original version of it. I don't think it matters. What is important is that both of those preparations were utilizing a piece of beef that is very, very lean. And so I think this is gonna be a really easy transition because these are so lean right now. There's yeah. just not any fat on them. No, And none. so it should be a pretty easy parallel. And that's kind of how I use snow goose for myself in general, is I'm always using it almost as a beef replacement in anything from like fajitas or burritos to stroganoff, you know. And that's the key with this dish is that you don't need it to be a fatty cut because the sauce is very fatty. The sauce brings all of that richness back into the dish. So all I'm doing here, by the way, I'm just kind of trimming this up and I'm trying to make sure that, well, for one, I'm trying to make sure that we don't have any shot left in these, but otherwise I'm not trying to trim it down because I don't want this to be any thinner than it is right now, or we run the risk of it of it overcooking. Overcooking. Right yeah. It 
So the key to a rusty potato, to be done the right way, is that it's crunchy on the outside and it's kind of fluffy on the inside. Okay. And I find that the best answer for that, I mean, there's a lot more elaborate ways to do it, but like the plain Jane like box grater for grating cheddar cheese yep. works perfect. Okay. Now, this is the trick though, is that you're gonna grate it into this bowl with the towel in it. And the reason is that we're gonna put some salt on this and we're gonna let it sit for just a few minutes. And then we're gonna actually take this and squeeze the water out. And you will be shocked how much water comes out of a potato. Like I don't think people think of a right. potato no. as being like a juicy vegetable. Definitely not. But it's got a ton of liquid in it. And if we leave it in, it won't stick together. Like it'll fall apart in the pan. But if you get all that excess water off, all that's left behind is the potato and its starch. And so it will kind of naturally glue itself together. So this recipe, again, I said there's like, there's a ton of versions of it. Nobody is sure which one's the original or even really which one's the correct one. So this is my version of it. And okay. I have kind of hybridized it a little bit because I like it to be a bit more sharp and tangy. So one of the things that is pretty much always in it though that you find in basically every recipe is mushrooms. The mushrooms bring almost no flavor to the dish. They are really textural more than anything else. And this, by the way, we're doing it with snow goose, obviously. This could easily be done with another piece of lean meat. Any sort of back strap from any kind of venison would be really, really excellent in this preparation. I think that's a, a thing a lot of people get hung up on is that because it's a bird, they think they should cook duck or goose right. like it's chicken. But you treat it as a red meat. Exactly, right. Is that it's it yes, it is a bird, but as you said, like one look at this and you go, yeah, yeah, we're not cooking that like chicken. Um, I know a lot of guys that would be remiss to think you're gonna have a date night with snow goose. <laughs> I bet I feel like once you tell your guide buddies, they're gonna be like, you did what? <laughs> so I have some shallots that I've just kind of chopped up small. I have some garlic here as well, and I'm just gonna kind of give that a little crush and a chop. The shallots and garlic are gonna go both in the sauce and then also in that potato rusty. All right, those are perfect. That looks great. Here, let me do this. I'm gonna throw a big pinch of salt in here just to help speed up literally the water coming out of this. Do me a favor, kind of just mix that salt into this, and then let's just set that aside for a second. We're gonna let it sit and kind of some of that water come off of it while I chop up our last ingredient here, our cornichons. Have you ever had a, a cornichon? Uh -uh. You ever tasted one? Here, try one. It's like a pickle on steroids. Like it's much, much, much more intense than like, you know, your average American dill pickle. Yeah. Like very, very tangy, but it's also because it's a gherkin, it's very crunchy. And so it will actually like retain its kind of texture when we cook it. So this dish, like a lot of things, especially classic sort of French cooking, mm -hmm. is all about what we call mise en place, meaning there's a lot of little things that you gotta kinda get together and get your, your kit of ingredients ready to go because once we're ready to cook, this happens really fast. This is like a 20 minute dish tops, like super quick actually. Mm -hmm. So, which is nice, cause that's also yeah. good for like, you know, date night in that you're not, you're not in there just like, you know, slaving right. away while somebody else is bored to tears. Like this is something that can come together relatively quickly, despite the fact that it seems complex. And the reason for that is that the traditional version of this dish, which kind of originated in most people's opinion from the Drake Hotel in New York, was actually made table side. So all of this stuff, a guy would like wheel out a cart to your table and make this thing table side, so. A lot of flair. And yeah, so if you wanna make this in your living room, feel free, you know? <laughs> This is one of my favorite herbs, super underutilized. Tarragon mm -hmm. has this like beautiful kind of licorice flavor to it, which I know a lot of people are gonna immediately be like, nope, not interested, but it's really, really good. And I especially like it with duck or geese. And then just some chives. And this is just to kind of round out that onion flavor that we're already gonna have from the shallots and the garlic. This will just be a nice addition to that as well. All right, we got all of our stuff over here. First thing we need to do actually is get this potato pancake started. So looking at this thing already, like this towel is soaked. There's so much liquid out of this. So here's what I want you to do. Kind of take the towel, bunch it up and like squeeze all the liquid out of it. And I'm gonna get some butter going in this pan. We have quite a bit of clarified butter, and you can see it's getting super, super hot right now. But that's what we want. We need this sort of initial hit of heat. So what I'm gonna do here is just kind of take these 
put these in here, and I mean the whole thing, I know it seems crazy, but I don't wanna smash down on it just yet. Like I'm gonna do that eventually, once it starts to set a little bit, but for now I want the potato in here to be kind of loose. What I do wanna do though is kinda of create a defined outside to it like this. Now, the biggest thing to watch is your temp here. So I'm over kind of medium heat and I'm gonna just keep paying attention to that as it goes. Let's set that aside and let that do its thing for a moment. Now, we can go ahead and work on cooking the geese here. Starting over high heat with this. And we're actually going in with whole butter. And this one we went in with clarified, meaning that all the milk solids from the butter are gone, so it won't burn. You can actually fry in clarified butter. For this, obviously all the milk solids are still in place right here, and we want that because we actually want these to brown. We want it to create that kind of caramel flavor mm -hmm. so that we don't have to cook the geese breast for very long and still get that same flavor that we would expect if we seared it really, really hard but this way we won't overcook it. So this is burn noisette. This is that color that we're looking for here. Nice and brown. Now it is time to add our, our meat. Now I haven't seasoned it until the last second because I don't want any moisture, moisture coming out of this. Right. I do want to throw a lid on this rusty though. And the reason is now you can see it's gotten a little bit golden around the outside. And so now's the time to put the lid on it and let it start to steam itself. Like that's what will cook the potato all the way through to the middle. This is definitely a slow build. It's not something that happens ultra fast. So all I'm gonna do here is give this one quick flip over, just kind of let this butter swim around it and then out of the pan. So let's go in with some mushroom. And we probably have more mushroom than we need. I find that just one even layer is perfect. Anytime you're kind of making these classic dishes, they were everything was always about balance. It was like not a heavy-handed approach. It was like just having the right amount of everything. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. But at the end of the day, it's not a complicated dish. Like it, right. it comes together pretty quickly because you just keep adding one more thing on top of one more thing on top of one more thing. You read those old 1920s or even earlier, late 1800s, early 1900s restaurant menus that had goose and duck yeah. on them. And what you realize is they're like surprisingly simple recipes. Yeah, and what you realize is that there was a time in this country when something like duck or goose was like the paramount. That yeah. was like what people wanted. All right. So we got some good color on our mushrooms. That's what we're looking for. Next thing is gonna be adding in our shallots. You know, we can actually go in with the garlic too at the same time. I might add just the tiniest little bit more butter to it because the mushrooms tend to have a tendency to soak it all up. The next ingredient for this is gonna be kind of the ingredient for the recipe. Like this is what makes it and it's cognac. So something pretty expensive. This is pretty high end. It brings a ton of flavor to this dish, but also remember this was table side. And so, this is a dish that was flambéed. So when I add this in here, which I'm gonna do in just a second, step back, like watch you're your eyebrows. You're gonna lose some beard hairs. Yeah, because you're gonna lose some beard hairs or you're gonna lose some eyebrows. So are you ready? Yeah. Now that's how you do date night. Yeah, exactly. That's some drama right there. Yeah. That's what you want. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of heavy cream. I don't know why I said a little bit. A pretty decent amount of heavy cream uh -huh. here. Yeah. You said the sauce was like the, the main part of the dish, but with how much work goes into just the sauce, it's no wonder it'll make snow goose like really. Yeah, this would make like a tennis shoe taste pretty good. Yeah. Like it really doesn't yeah. matter what you put it on because it's got a very, this has a very, very pronounced flavor. So in here, by the way, just so that we're clear, we got the mushrooms, shallots, garlic. We added the cognac, we added some heavy cream, and then this is just some dark poultry stock. This adds a little bit of additional kind of savory, meaty flavor to it. Now, here are your main ingredients to what makes it Diane. The other big one is the Dijon mustard. So this is a really big heaping tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And then I also add a little bit of tomato paste. And I can't decide if that's a traditional component or not. I've seen it in some and I've seen it not in others. It also, again, adds a little bit of acidity. And more importantly, you notice like, 
how much thicker this got when we added the mustard and the tomato paste because they're both emulsifiers. So they bring together what fat was left in this pan. They combine all that together, they emulsify it, and we get a much, much better consistency here. So we're gonna let this simmer for a few minutes. A Couple of other ingredients that we're gonna add to it. So this is our Maggie seasoning. This is super strong, by the way. So I like to add, you know, I don't know, five, six drops to it. Not very much. It will get way too salty way fast if you're not careful. Now, on the other hand, it's a pretty decent amount of Worcestershire sauce, pretty generous amount. And if you're ever worried that it might be like sticking to the pan, like the stuff is sticking, grab your rubber spatula and really make sure that you're scraping the bottom of this pan because you don't want any of this stuff to burn. And the tomato paste will absolutely do that, as will the shallots and garlic. Let's take a look at this potato roasty here and see. Yeah, that looks really good to me. This is where I said, now I'll come in with my rubber spatula and I'll kind of flatten this thing out just a little bit. I, the reason I do this more than anything is that I can tell when I'm using this rubber spatula, if the potato like smooths out, almost like mashed potato, then it's soft, it's cooked. Gotcha. You know? All right, Sean, we're pretty much there. Let's add our cornichon to this. Let's add our tarragon to it as well. Chives, and then, because it needed a little bit more butter, <laughs> a little splash. So let's give this a taste. See where we're at on seasoning. That's pretty good, man. Yeah, that's really good. That's pretty tasty, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take my, my breasts now, still super raw, and I'm just gonna set them right on top. I like to leave this for maybe two, three minutes to let those breasts just finish cooking. But I don't actually like basting them over the top. I like being able to see the breast. This is a personal preference. All right, so let's take a look at this potato roasty. So this is a little trick. One of the reasons I like the lid, obviously it speeds up the cooking, but also it allows you to flip this thing over really easily. Oh, slick. And then just kind of slide it back into the pan from there and let that bottom cook. That looks good. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this. It's nice and crunchy on the outside and really soft on the inside. I don't know where this idea that snow goose isn't something awesome came from. I'm just not sure who in the world was the first person who was like, oh, they're not fit to be eaten. You know, I think part of that comes from when they created the spring conservation order that you're saying everyone can shoot as many as they want. Right. You kind of devalue it as meat. Yeah, I agree. I think anytime that happens, you totally do that. I think you devalue it because if you can kill so many, then it must not be that great. Right. Like, which couldn't be further from the truth. I've been on a lot of snow goose hunts where guys are, you know, offering away their meat. They're trying to get someone else <laughs> to take the meat and I'm glad to take it. It looks, beautiful. It looks very classic to me. You know, to me, this is a plate of food that looks like something you would get in a restaurant, I imagine like the time like when my grandparents were dating, you know, classic steak Diane, creamy sauce, rich, flambéed, you know, something European like this, the rusty potato, like to me this is just a classic preparation. But it's also one that, well, you'll have to be the judge if you think it's, I think it's pretty tasty. I think it's kind of a showstopper, so. You wanna try it? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna grab a knife as well. Not that we'll need it. I mean, honestly, this snow goose is super, super tender, which I'm surprised. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting when we were hunting. I just assumed that since these birds fly so far that the meat had to be relatively tough. But, I mean, that couldn't be further from the truth. This is ultra tender. That is really good. I just, I love this recipe. Like, there's a reason that some things are classic, mm -hmm. you know? At the end of the day, it's like the dishes that stick around for 50, 60, 70, in this case, who knows, maybe 80 years, like yeah. they don't do that because they weren't very good. Like they do right. it because if made well, if made the right way, they're just really fantastic. And to think a guy can go fill his freezer with hundreds of these completely legally. Right. And, and most guys would rather, you know, not take that meat. And, I can't and, believe it. 
to think that you would do anything other than just try to put that in your freezer. Right. I don't understand why you wouldn't. I know, it's really, really fantastic. And, I, and this is one of those things that, this happens with all game meats, you know? There's a stigma and it's usually based around misunderstanding more than anything else. And for me, the best way to clear that misunderstanding is to serve somebody something that for the first time they go, oh, wow, like, right. and that changes their mind. And so I think that's why, yeah, your buddies are gonna be like, wait, you made your, you made snow goose for, for a date? Like, <laughs> right. But if they had this, I think they changed their tune completely. Oh yeah, absolutely. So what do you think? Do you think this is a you think this is a, a, a possibility? Gonna add this one to the old roster behind Snow Goose Burrito, like this the yeah. Snow Goose oh, Steak yeah. Diane. If I can figure out getting the date part, I'll make it. <laughs> That's delicious.